Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's video lesson, we're going to be looking at grade 11 maths analytical geometry, a past exam question. We're going to be looking at the question from November 2019, paper 2, question 4. And it reads as follows. It says in the diagram, B is a point on the y-axis, A is 4 and Y, B, C is 3 and 0, D is 7 and 6 are the vertices of a rectangle. Very important. A, B, C, D, diagonals B, D and AC are drawn. The inclination of DC is alpha and BAC is theta. Now, the first very important thing that they told me here is that this is a rectangle. So I need to know the properties of my rectangle. That's very important. What are the properties of a rectangle? The properties of a rectangle are as follows. Opposite sides are equal. Opposite sides are parallel. So this is what we have here first. So opposite sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel. The diagonals are equal in length and also the diagonals bisect each other. So the diagonals are equal in length, diagonals bisect each other and the vertices are equal to 90 degrees as given there. Right, so even if they didn't put this 90 degree angle there, we need to know that all of these angles here the vertices, vertices where two lines meet, it's going to equal to 90 degrees, All right? So make sure that everything is given here. You see the angle of inclination there is alpha. Now, one of the things that you have to understand in this particular section is that you must know all your formulas and you must know when and where to use them. So it's very important and it's going to be a follow on from grade 10, but I'm going to cover all the formulas as we answer our questions, okay? So if we quickly look at the work schedule, and the work schedule says that we need to find the equation of a line through two given points. So we need to know the straight line equation y equals to mx plus c. Or you can say y minus y1 equals to m into x minus x1. The equation of the line where one point is parallel and one point or rather perpendicular lines as well. We need to know the relationship between parallel and perpendicular lines. Very quickly, parallel lines have equal gradients. And if two lines are perpendicular to each other, the product of the gradients is equal to minus one. Collinear lines, they should have said collinear points. Collinear points are points which lie on the same line, which means that the gradient between any two of those points is going to be the same. And the angle of inclination, that's the most important thing in grade 11. We're going to be using this formula here, m equals to 10 of theta. Therefore, theta equals to tan inverse of m. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do in order to find the angle of inclination. So let's get straight into it then. So the first question is determine the gradient of CD. So once again, we need to know the gradient formula. So let's look at question 4.1, 4.1. The gradient formula is as follows, m equals to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 the gradient m small m right between two points gradient or slope of a line so therefore let's look at cd right so there's the line cd here and as you can see this is going upwards towards the right so it should give us a positive gradient that's important for you to know right so it's going to be y2 which is we're going to call it here six right so we normally call the upper coordinates x2 and y2 well i do that anyway so we're going to say six minus zero so that will be y2 minus y1 i'm going to write that down six minus zero six minus zero all over and here x2 minus x1 will be seven minus three so i'm going to write that down seven minus three having said that you can call x1 y1 x2 y2 any one of the coordinates so long as you are consistent when you are substituting into your formula so even if you said 0 minus 6 all over 3 minus 7 you are going to get the same answer right so therefore let's look at it 6 minus 0 is 6 and 7 minus 3 is 4 which simplifies to 3 over 2 okay so there was no need for us to use our calculator there. However, if you feel comfortable using a calculator, then do so. The next question is calculate the size of alpha. So here they want us to find alpha, which is 
the angle of inclination. Very quickly, learners, the angle of inclination is the angle that the line, which is basically CD, makes with the positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. Remember, anti-clockwise is going in that direction, right? So that is my angle of inclination. Once again, it is the angle that is made with the line from the positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. And as you can see, this angle is an acute angle. So acute angle from a positive gradient. So these are the little things that you must remember to have a better understanding of your work. So now what we'll do is we'll say that alpha is going to equal to tan inverse of my gradient, which is now going to be tan inverse of three over two. Now why three over two? Because as you can see, I just found the gradient of CD and that is the line, there's it here. That is the line that is making the angle with the positive x axis. As you can see, alpha lies between CD and the positive x axis. Therefore, we need to use the gradient of CD. So let's put that in our calculator. So therefore now we'll say shift and 10 of three, yeah, three over two, three over two and equals to, let's round this to two decimal places, 56.31 degrees. We can say 56.31 degrees. Having said that, what if they gave you the angle of inclination here and they asked you to find the gradient of this line CD? See, if they told me that, that this particular angle here is 56,31 degrees, then I can use a gradient formula and I can actually find the gradient of this line here. See, for example, I can say 10 of 56.31 degrees. Now, obviously, I rounded it off, so I'm going to get close to 3 over 2, which is 1.5, right? See? Or, oh, yeah, see, 1.5, right? So it's the exact same thing. Now, the next question is determine the value of y. Determine the value of y. So let's go and look at that. There's y here, right? So what are they testing in this particular question? Well, they are testing the fact that you should know that the vertices of a rectangle meet at 90 degrees. And the second thing that they're testing is that you should know that if two lines are perpendicular to each other, the product of the gradients is equal to minus one. See, now you just found the gradient of this line, which is, gradient is what? There's a chair, three over two, right? CD is 3 over 2, 3 over 2. So therefore, the gradient of the line AD must be minus 2 over 3. Why? If you multiply minus 2 over 3 times 3 over 2, you must get negative 1 because the two lines are perpendicular to each other. Now, once you know that the gradient of AD is equal to minus 2 over 3, you can now use the gradient formula and if you substitute these values or these coordinates 4 and y and 7 and 6 you'll be able to solve for y so let's do that so our first step now is to write down the gradient of a d so therefore 4.3 i'm gonna start off by saying 4.3 the gradient of a d is equal to minus what i wrote over here minus 2 over 3 so minus 2 over 3 and see I'm going to write down the following reason. I'm going to say AD is perpendicular to CD. AD, AD is perpendicular to CD, right? Now I'm going to write down my gradient formula M equals to Y2 minus 1 all over X2 minus X1. So therefore, here now I'll write minus 2 over 3 equals 2. Right, so I'm finding now the gradient of basically AD. There's it here. So once again, I'm going to say Y minus 6 all over 4 minus 7. Right, Y minus 6, Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. So Y minus 6 all over 4 minus 7. So let's write that down. Y minus 6 all over 4 minus 7 and let's now solve y minus y minus 6 
4 minus 7 is minus 3, and that's minus 2 over 3. Right, so we just need to do a little bit of algebra. Yeah, let's cross multiply. If I say minus 3 times minus 2, what will I get? 6, right? Positive 6 over 3, and I'll get 2. So that simplifies it there, and then I'll get y minus 6 there. So if I move the minus 6 over to the left-hand side, I'll get plus 6. So 2 plus 6 equals to 8. Therefore, what can I conclude? That y is equal to 8, and the coordinates of a is 4 and 8. So let's write down that. So the coordinates of A is 4 and 8. So Y is equal to 8. That's very important. Let's write that down. Right, so now they want the 4.4. Calculate the size of theta. Calculate the size of theta. Now with this question here, now you've got to be careful now. Look at where theta is, right? It's in between these two lines here. The best way that I would do this particular question is I always look for the exterior angle of a triangle okay or i like to form some kind of a triangle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the following as you can see i just found this coordinates here of a which is 4 and 8 right so if i extend this particular line here i'm going to extend the line a b a little bit and if i extend it you can see there there's my x-axis there what do you notice we already know that this is a rectangle right so therefore this line here which is cd is parallel to ab what does this mean it means that this particular angle over here is going to equal to 56.31 degrees and as you can see that will be corresponding angles right so we now have the following that this is 56.31 degrees you can see there that's both corresponding the alpha and that angle there is corresponding angles, right? Now, the next thing that we have over here is following. You see this line here, right? This line here, you can now find this angle of inclination here, right? So let me just change the color so you can see properly, right? See this angle of inclination here? I can now find this angle of inclination, which will be now as you can see, because I right because I can find the gradient here. The gradient here will be eight minus zero or four minus eight, right? And if I can find this angle of inclination, and if I subtract whatever this angle is here, subtract fifty six comma three one, I'll be able to find the theta, because remember now the exterior angle of the triangle equals to the sum of the interior opposite angles. Let me show you how that looks. See this triangle here. There's a the chair. There we go. There's a triangle there. And as you can see, there's the exterior angle of the triangle. So this whole angle here is the exterior angle of the triangle. Equals to the sum of the interior opposite angles. All right. So problem is almost solved there. Eh? So what's the first step? Well, the first step for you to do is to say A, what you got there? C, D. I would call that point here e and right? i would call that point e and i'll say a e c is equal to 56.31 degrees and i would write that reason i don't like to make any assumptions and neither should you so we'll say a e c is equal to 56.31 degrees and we'll say corresponding angles that'll be my first step my next step will be i want to call this particular so that i got alpha i got theta so let's call that beta right so we can find that angle of inclination there, beta. So we can, once we find that, we can say beta minus this angle AEC will equals to beta. Let's go work that out. So therefore, my first step for 4.4 is going to be as follows. I'm going to say 4.4. I'm going to say AEC is equal to 56.31 degrees. So say. 56,31 degrees and I'm going to say corresponding angles and that is because AB is parallel to CD. So I'm going to write down AB is parallel to CD. Then after that, I'm going to work out the gradient of AC. So let's work out the gradient of AC. 
So let's do that very quickly. So we're going to say gradient of AC is going to equal to, let's write the formula, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, which will equal to, what we got here? 8, here's it here, 8 minus 0 all over 4 minus 3. 8 minus 0 over 4 minus 3. So 8 minus 0 all over 4 minus 3. And that's 8 over 1, which is 8. Therefore, beta must equal to tan inverse of 8. I'm finding the angle of inclination of which line? AC. As you can see, I call it beta. Right, so let's go and put that in our calculator. So now that will be shift tan eight. Let's round to two decimal places. Eighty-two point eight seven. So eighty-two comma eight seven degrees. Therefore, theta is going to equals to beta minus a e c, which is equal to. 82.87 which I already have there minus and as you can see AEC let's go back there is going to be 56.31 which we already know 56.31 equals to and we can now call it here 26.56 degrees 26.56 five six degrees and that is my value for theta then as if you haven't subscribed already make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel you can like my facebook page justin lazarus mathematics you can also watch all videos on my website jlmax.com in order of the work schedule and i'll catch you in the next video